Hey guys, let's go ahead and get started. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining us on this webinar. Go ahead and grab a pen, grab a paper so you can take some notes as we're going to go over a lot of information um, to you, okay? We're going to give you a lot of information. I want to start with a question though, okay? Do you know how much is coming out of your paycheck? Do you know that? I talk to a lot of individuals and they may tell me their salary or how much they get paid per hour or their take home pay, which is the net take home pay. But when I ask them, how much money comes out of your check? How much federal taxes come out of your check? How much state taxes, if you're paying state taxes, come out of your check? How much is your social security? What else is coming out of your check? A lot of individuals do not know and that is a bill and they do not know the answer and 25 to 30 percent of that money that's coming out of your check is going to pay taxes 25 to 30 percent of your money is going to pay taxes and most individuals do not know how much that is exactly for them what is there was a way for you to keep an extra 300 to 600 dollars in your pocket every single month that means it's not coming out of your check anymore is going into your bank account and that's what we're going to be talking about this afternoon before i really get into it for those that do not know me my name is terrence hawkins i am the founder of hawkins accounting and tax service i've been doing taxes guys um, since i was 15 years of age i am 48 years of age now. My wife and I have been in business with Hawks Accounting for 23 years now. We are kind of excited about that. I am also an enrolled agent. Now, many individuals do not know what an enrolled agent is. We're enrolled agents, guys. They're the only federal licensed tax practitioners who specialize in taxation and also have unlimited rights to represent taxpayers before the IRS and we're able to do that in all 50 states. Some individuals say we are Americans tax experts. Well, I also um, am a part of the National Association of Enrolled Agents. I'm a part of the North Carolina Society of Enrolled Agents, as well as the American Society of Tax Problem Solvers. We help people with tax issues. But I'm so proud, so proud to always say that I am an alumni of the University of North Carolina at Charlotte, where I got my accounting degree there, but also I've sat on the um, um, alumni board of directors, and I also sit now on the, the Belt Business School Council as well, okay? Guys, but what I'm proud about is the education. You know, I, I did the radio shows, I speak throughout the country, you know, educate individuals on different types of strategies that they can use to save money on their taxes, paying less in doing so. Now, I talk a lot about what my daddy taught me when I was 15 years of age about the number one tax deduction that you can have. And the bottom line is this. The bottom line is this. If you do not have a home-based business, you are paying way too much money in taxes. You're paying too much. You can even write that down. No, if you do not have a home business, you're paying way too much money in taxes. And I'll prove this throughout the country at my different speaking engagements. You see, the Eternal Revenue Service guys have, have put certain um, laws together, okay? Our government has passed tax laws to create an incredible opportunity for the home-based business owners. Many individuals say tax laws are written for business individuals. You might have heard that before, right? Where there are hundreds, or potential tax deductions for the home-based business owner, but you do not have to know all hundreds of those. You don't have to know. If you become good at seven deductions, you can potentially save yourself three to $6,000 a year in taxes, okay? You just have to do them correctly. We're gonna go over those, so I hope you got your pen together, okay? The first one, writing off deductions just on your home. And these seven I'm gonna go over, guys, are things that you already currently are doing. We're just gonna start the basics. Things you're already currently doing now and turning those into business expenses instead of using this as personal expenses. 
you currently are already have a mortgage or you're renting. Okay, you have heat in that home. You may have air conditioning, electricity, gas, oil, water, sewer, even trash collections. Yes, we teach you how to write off the trash collection, recycling fees, homeowners association dues, house cleaning, guys, security, maintenance costs. All of those things can potentially be a write-off if you know the rules. So as I'm going through this, I need you to say, if you are paying any of these things and you do not have a business, you are paying too much money in taxes. Bottom line. The next one, mileage on your vehicle. Now, this is what people are, are missing because the Turner Revenue Service basically said that you can combine your personal errands along with your business errands and you can duck the standard deduction with this year. I mean, the standard of 58 cents per mile this year. 50, so that means every mile you drive, 58 cents can be reducing your income, which then means what? You're paying less in taxes. But we teach you how, guys, to turn those personal errands into business errands. If you're not doing this, you're paying too much in your taxes. How about trips? Many individuals say that they go on these nice vacations, right? Family vacations, going on vacations alone. But, you know, if you properly plan, you can potentially write off 100% of your hotel stays, 100% of ground transportation, 100% of trips, um, excuse me, tips and gratuities, 50% of your meals. The IRS has something that says you must make them business days. That's all you need to know, how to make your trips a business day. When you learn how to make your trips a business day, you can then write these things off. So if you're taking a vacation, you went on a weekend stay, you're done any of those things, and if you didn't have a business, you just lost money. You just lost money. We don't want you to lose any more money. Business meals. Business meals. If you're eating out anyway, we teach you how to conduct business while you're eating out in the flow of your eating out, and you have 50% tax deductible on those meals that you have. This one is missed too. You do not want to miss this. So if you're eating out, Let's write that off. How about just operating cost itself? A lot of people don't think about that. It's operating costs and running the business. And some of the things that you already have, you're going to need a business. Most people need what? Cell phone. You need a cell phone these days. You need the internet. You need all those things. You can write that off. The starting cost of the business is a write-off. Suppose you need to get a new laptop. You need to get a TV for your office. You need to get desks and chairs and all of those things for your office. You got to have to pay for the website. You got printing costs. You got business cards. All of those things can be write-offs. Trying to revenue service that they give you up to $5,000 in startup costs, $5,000 in organization costs. You just need to know how to write those things off. That's all. This one is big. Hiring your own kids, your own children. And if you have a child, I need you to listen to me clearly on this one, especially if your child is between the age of seven and 17 years old, okay? Because you, you can employ your child. Your child can work for the home-based business. And look at this. They are not subject to Social Security and Medicare. They're exempt from Social Security and Medicare. And you can pay anybody up to the standard deduction this year, the standard deduction is $12,000, and they do not have to file federal nor state taxes. But the good part about it is you get to write that off 100%. So they get to make money that you're paying them, right? They don't have to pay taxes on that money, no Social Security Medicare. You get to write it off, which reduces your income. You save money on taxes. And the Turner Revenue Service does not dictate what they must do with their money. So they can pay for their own private school. They can pay for their own AAU events, their own basketball events and football and cheerleading and volleyball and all the different activities that they have, even their own clothes and the school trips. All of those, they can pay for themselves. You just have to do it the right way. But if you have a child in between the age of seven and 17 and you do not have a business, you're losing money. You're paying way too much money in taxes. You just need to implement the strategy. Healthcare costs. 
And I'm not just talking about the insurance premiums, even though those can potentially be a write-off, okay? I'm not just talking about your annual deductibles and co-pays and things of that nature. I'm also talking about, guys, over-the-counter drugs. There's a specific way that you can write off 100% of your expenses for healthcare costs, including over-the-counter drugs. That's a specific way that you can um, have to do that. But I'm talking about, yes, your Advils, your Claritins, your Tylenols, over-the-counter drugs can potentially be a write-off. Now, if you just saw those seven that I'm talking about, and you're saying, Terrence, you know, based on those seven, I'm spending money on those things. You know, I'm spending money on the things. I definitely got rent or mortgage. I, I got a car that I'm driving. I do eat out. I do go on vacation. You know, I got a cell phone for operating expense. You know, you know, I do have a child between the age of seven and 17. I, I do pay for certain things in medical. If you're doing some of any one of those things, you need a home-based business. It can potentially save you three to $6,000 a year on your taxes. And this is just seven that we're going over. Just seven. And this is one of the strategies that's used to do it. But I need you to understand something else a little bit about taxes. Because I have to talk about this thing called refund. Have to talk about this thing called refund real quick. Because people get excited when you talk about a refund. Now, to understand this, you have to understand the tax system. We live in a pay as you earn tax system. Again, pay as you earn. That means as you're earning income, you have to pay those taxes. Uh, if you're earning, if you're a W-2 employee, uh, you're doing the, um, the federal withholdings is your pay as you earn. If you're self-employed, you're doing estimated tax payments, but you're paying as you earn. Now, what happened is we do that all year long, pay as you earn system, and then that next year, January through April, April the 15th of most um, years, we do this thing called a tax return. Well, the pay as you earn, the Internal Revenue Service said they want the taxes. They want it then. They don't want to have to wait the next year. They want it then. So they say you pay as you earn during the year. You do this thing called the tax return, and they're going to see how you did. Problem is, we look for that word refund. All we want to know is what's my refund? How much refund do I get? Without understanding what refund really is. If you look at this, this is a 2017 tax return, okay? And if you look at line number 75 here, you know, on if you have a 2018 tax return, look at your line number 19. But it says, this is the amount you overpaid at the end of the line. This is the amount you overpaid. So I need you to understand what a refund really is. A refund is something that you overpaid and they're giving you the money back. That's what a refund is. So what has happened is the Turner Revenue Service said, you know, on your pension earned system, your job has taken out too much money during the year. They're taking out too much money. We need to treat the Turner Revenue Service just like any other business. If we're going out to a business and we are purchasing some item, we would never overpay them and allow them to keep that money for months before we get it back. We need to um, treat the Internal Revenue Service the exact same way. We don't supposed to let them keep our money. We don't want a refund, guys. Refund is bad. They're keeping the money all year long. How much are they keeping? The average refund, the IRS sent over $324 billion in 2018 back to taxpayer. So in 2018, they spent $324 billion. Think about that sitting into an account generating interest for them. $324 billion. The average refund was $2,727. This is the 2018 numbers. <laughs> this is a monthly cash flow or average of $227. If people would have saying, I don't want a refund, I'm not letting you keep my money. Instead of doing an average of $2,727 to get about a refund, I want my money now. They could have increased their take-home pay $227 just by saying, I don't want a refund. How do they do that? They do that with the W-4 form. The W-4 form is the form that basically tells your employer, you know, how to treat your money. It tells them actually what to take out. There's a formula that they have to go by. You need to make sure you have the right numbers. 
You can't just say, um, I'm, I'm married or single and I got X amount of deductions. No, it's a little bit more than that. Because this form, guys, also goes on all of your income, not just your wages, but do you have um, interest income or dividend income? Do you have capital gains? Do you have uh, a real estate company or business? Do you have just a regular business? Do you have social security income? Do you have retirement or pensions, right? Do you have other income? Even for some of y'all, do you have gambling income? A lot of things have to go in there to be considered. They also have some deductions, you know? Do you have the IRA deductions? Do you have student loan deductions? Do you have health savings account deductions? Some of the, it have to be considered when basically filling this form out. We don't do that. We just need help in doing it. But this is why 70% of people are overpaying the Eternal Revenue Service. This is why. We have to stop that, right? We have to stop that. Now, what would you do with that money? If you look at what I just said, on the first part, we talk about a home-based business being $300 to $600, that things that you're currently doing now. And then we talked about stop overpaying the turn of revenue services refund with the average in 2018 was $227. What would you do with that combined income? Some of you guys say, you know, I, I can catch up with some bills, medical expenses, student loan, but unexpected retirement investing. Some people say, hey, even my vacation can get a little bit better. I want a nicer meal. I want some nicer clothes, whatever it is, guys, when you like to do that. And you start that off with the strategy of having a business. The question that each and every one of you should be asking yourself now is, what business should I get? What business should I get? Okay. Of course, we want you to look at the MWR Financial Business Opportunity. I'm going to tell you that information is one that thousands of individuals are choosing. But as you're looking for that, I want you to evaluate a couple of things. You need to have a certain formula in getting a business. I've been in business for a long time and I counsel a lot of companies. One thing you want to look at, guys, when looking at home-based business is the product and service that they have. Okay, Is this product and service things that people need today? And here's the important. And in the future, do they need it today and in the future? A bonus is that people need that in the past as well. That means it can be here for what? A longer period of time. Also, is it affordable to start? And more importantly, maintain. In other words, if I'm going to save 300 to $600 a month on my taxes, am I paying less than that to maintain that business until I start making a profit? Am I paying less than that? And that's the goal. Next one, no special license to obtain. You can't get license to do certain things. I'm not saying that. But a lot of times, if you're already working and you're already doing things, you have kids, you have church, you have life, you might not have time to get the license and to do certain things, okay? There's a lot of things out there that you don't have to worry about that, okay? And then the last one, doesn't consume your time. It's supposed to be something that you can do on top of what you're already doing in, in, at home. Now, if your part-time income with your home-based business start to supersede your, your full-time business, great, that's a great problem to have, right? But you need one that doesn't consume your time. We do believe that MWR Financial is the perfect business. You're going to be able to work from home. You're going to be able to set your own hours. No income limits there, okay? No licensing required. You're going to be able to qualify for all of the 130 different tax deductions. They got other things there that they're going to give you to make sure that you can track your expenses and do everything else that you need. But you're going to get paid to refer individuals to get their product. They got one product, but here's what I like. It basically covers the things that people need, not only today, but in the future. Look at the problems of what's going on. 78% of Americans are currently living to pay paycheck to paycheck. 70% of Americans are paying too much in taxes, right? 80% of Americans have credit challenges. 90% of Americans are buried in debt. And 70% have less than $5,000 saved at age 65. Because of those things, these were problems 10 years ago. They are problems now, and I'm sure people also want to save money on their taxes, what, in the future, and retire, what, in the future. Their product, basically, gives you experts 
to handle those problems there. They are financial solutions company. Absolutely awkward. So what do I want you to do? Guys, the time is indeed now for you to stop overpaying the internal revenue service. That's first. But we want you to get back with the MWR consultant that showed you this webinar, that invited you to this webinar. Get back with them. Get back with them so they can show you a full business presentation of MWR Financial. And maybe you're going to still be one of the thousands of individuals that's joining uh, our company as well. With that being said, guys, as always, this is T-Hawk, and I'm out. Have a great day, guys. Goodbye.